All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are talking about the Carolina Panthers in today's video. So I was just reading an article about the worst teams to be traded to in the NFL, and obviously the Carolina Panthers are on that list. Um, it doesn't matter the position. According to them, it just is not a place you want to go. And I just find it interesting. You know, I know the Panthers had a disastrous season, and anytime your head coach gets fired in the middle of the year, especially when that becomes a consecutive reoccurring thing, you know, it's very un unideal, unfortunate. But I just find it funny how, you know, pre draft, everybody talks about why your situation matters. You know, who you go to matters. If you are a rookie quarterback or, you know, any positional player for that, like that's an obvious given, right? But the most important position, the quarterback, you know, it's like even more. So pre-draft, you'll hear, oh, well, you know, Jaden Daniels could be good as long as he doesn't go here. Um, Drake May could be good as long as he doesn't go here. Bryce Young got drafted to the worst team in the NFL, the Carolina Panthers, or actually two years ago, they weren't the worst team, but last year they were the worst team in the NFL. But for some reason, the discourse around Bryce Young is that he just sucks. You know, it's not the sacks. It's not the coach. It's not the GM. It's not who's around him. It's not the offensive line. It's it's Bryce Young sucks. And as an SEC football enjoyer, and as a non-Alabama hater, um, you know, watch a Bryce Young play in college. Uh, you're gonna be just fine. And so for me, everybody's freaking out about who they lost on the defensive side. It doesn't matter. All I need to know is Bryce Young my franchise quarterback. That is all I need to know. So welcome back to the channel. Obviously, we're talking about the Carolina Panthers in today's video. I actually like what they're doing. Um, NFL media hates it, and it's mainly because of the moves they made on the defensive side of things. You know, the Brian Burns trade, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Lost some, you know, cornerbacks, lost some players all across the board. But like I said, none of that matters. And with that being said as well, uh, the Panthers defense was not that bad last season, despite what statistics would tell you. And the Panthers defense this upcoming season won't be bad, despite you know whatever you think uh, the advanced statistics tell you. So mm -hmm. hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily NFL content. Panthers fans, if you're trying to get this video to 100 likes, I would really appreciate it. Um, you know, I'll try and make as much Panthers content as I can. There's just 32 teams in the NFL. Sometimes it's only once every two weeks. But if this video gets over 100 likes, we'll continue to ramp this up, all right? What a lot of people don't know about the Carolina Panthers last season, they were tied for the second most sacks allowed at 65, right? That is a huge reason for why Bryce Young struggled as a rookie. Now, the free agency market, the GM, the Panthers organization, made a couple of nice moves in my opinion. They picked up right guard Robert Hunt, and left guard Damian Lewis. Now, these are two immediate upgrades. The Panthers' guards desperately struggled last season. And these are two OG. They're going to get the job done. The knock on those two moves isn't necessarily that they are good for the team. It's that they were an overpay. Now, I'm not a GM. Um, I'm more of a casual fan. I'm a Packers fan. Pay whatever they want. Pay whatever it takes to get them over because you can't have your quarterback get sacked 65 times, whether he's a rookie or whether he's freaking Tom Brady. All right. So they fixed that immediately. Now, the second big issue was also they had no run game. Uh, we'll talk about that draft pick, Jonathan Brooks, in just a second here. But another big issue was, you know, Jonathan Mingo, you know, he saw like what, 40 something catches, but 80 some targets. There was no tight end play. We'll talk about that in just a second because I love the JT Sanders pickup. Um, but outside of Adam Thielen, there was no consistent, reliable wide receiver. So you trade for Deontay Johnson. Now, what everybody wants the Panthers to do is extend him immediately. Deontay only played, I believe it was 12 games. Might have been 13 games last season. So he had like 700 receiving yards. He's a couple of years removed from being a thousand yard receiver. I would wait. I would wait. I'd hold off. But the point is, you got a solidified, reliable wide receiver one to help out your you know, sophomore campaign quarterback and Bryce Young. So now I have Dante Johnson. I have Adam Thielen. I still have Jonathan Mingo. I still have Terrence Marshall Jr. Um, you know, I'm actually pretty big on Jonathan Mingo, and I think having Deontay the out there is going to help free him up whenever he's on the field a lot. But it also doesn't end just there. So in round one, pick 32, they decide to trade with the Buffalo Bills to select Xavier Leggett. Now, what's interesting about this is this move was frowned upon in the media world. I'm a Notre Dame fan, but I have a bunch of family who went to South Carolina, so I'm like a slightly biased 
South Carolina Gamecock fan. Xavier's legit. Um, he's very legit. And it might not be right away. Like a lot of rookies don't you know, become stars in their rookie season. But this was a big move. And, um, you know, we've talked about this time and time again. This is off topic here. But hiring Dave Canales, to me, is even bigger than trading for Deontay Johnson. It's even bigger than their whole entire draft. Baker Mayfield had a phenomenal comeback season last year, and it was because of Dave Canales. Or Dave Canales had a huge you know, reason for it. He was a huge part of that. He also was a part of Geno Smith's Comeback Player of the Year award where he threw and made a Pro Bowl 30-plus touchdowns, all right? He knows what he's doing with quarterbacks, and that is, to me, one of the most slept-on, underrated, undercovers of the entire NFL offseason, and it's just because he's a first-year head coach. But like we saw with guys like D'Amico Ryans last season, um, first-year head coaches are not bound to fail. In fact, I think you should give him the benefit of the doubt, which I think pretty much everybody is in Panthers fans because he knows what he's doing. And if there's going to be somebody who can get Bryce Young on track, if the issue was not saying it is, because I don't think it is, if the issue was Bryce Young, uh, Dave Canales is going to get him back on track. Dave Canales loves Xavier Leggett because he brings versatility. He can make plays all across the field. He can catch. He can do jet sweeps. He can return kicks. Um, that's a versatile skill playmaker that the Carolina Panthers offense just did not have last season. In fact, Xavier had 10 catches on throws of 30 plus air yards last season at South Carolina. That was tied for the second most in all of college football. And the Panthers, unfortunately, only had one reception on throws of 30 plus air yards last season. That's the fewest in a season since the Bengals had zero back in 2020. All right. Insert Jonathan Brooks. Now, I like Chubba. Um, it doesn't appear like Miles Sanders was great last season. The contract, I should say, was great last season. Um, but you have Job Hubbard and you still have Miles Sanders. Jonathan Brooks is a freaking playmaker. Unfortunately, he did get injured at the end of his tenure at Texas. So that is some reason for some type of concern. He found the end zone last season 10 times on 187 carries. In fact, at the time of his injury, uh, Jonathan Brooks was actually sixth in college football on rushing yards with over 1,100. And he had broken or evaded 63 total tackles. That was the second most in college football at that point. He also had 11 rushes of 20 plus yards, including four for touchdowns. Panthers had nine total rushes of 20 plus yards and one touchdown. So I think I unplugged my mic. Then, then we have JT Sanders. I'll make this real quick because we're running out of time here. Sanders had 99 catches in three seasons. That was the most ever in Texas Longhorn history uh, for tight ends. Bryce Young had a NFL worst 44.8 total QBR last season when targeting tight ends. Uh, in fact, his tight ends combined for 59 catches, which was the fifth fewest in the NFL. So they did exactly what they needed to do to at least see some type of improvement and consistency from Bryce Young. And that is literally all I care about. I like their defense, and if we can get 100 likes on this video, I'll make a, a defensive video in the next couple of days. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. But give me your thoughts on Bryce Young and this Carolina Panthers offense.